Hey guys, so we're kind of going backwards here as far as testing of energetic materials in as much as that we are testing probably some of the weakest primaries um, that I have ever uh, made and some of the weakest primaries in existence as far as I know. Um, I mean, this stuff is just slightly more energetic than like nitrocellulose. And so what we're looking at here, as you see, we're looking at dye and trinitrophenols. And the only reason I'm actually doing this is because a viewer requested that I show this. Um, I'm not showing the synthesis because it's boring and there's a million syntheses of this stuff on YouTube. Uh, more often than not, you see it listed as picric acid synthesis, which is the trinitrophenol. Um, dinitrophenol is uh, basically a building block to uh, picric acid with just one uh, less nitronium ion on it or one... Uh, less nitro group so it's basically just made as you can see if you watch any of the picric acid videos by the nitration uh, direct nitration using um, nitric acid of salicylic acid or you can also use acetyl salicylic acid which is aspirin uh, the only difference there is that you have to first deacetylate the acetyl salicylic acid first so uh, if you have salicylic acid just straight up, you know, obviously it's better because you can save a step. But uh, as you can see, you know, both of these, they look pretty similar. Um, you know, the TNP or the DNP here, I'm sorry. You know, it's a yellow powder. Uh, it's kind of amorphous. And that's, as, that's the best that I could get it to go. This has been uh, recrisped twice. And I was trying to see if I could get some better crystals. Uh, but it just wouldn't uh, form anything more than just this kind of amorphous powder. And uh, then we have the TNP here. It looks very similar, slightly different shade of yellow. Uh, it's uh, a lot more sparkly. This has also been recrisped twice. Um, so if you know, if you didn't know what it was and you were just looking at it, you probably would have no idea which is which. That's why I have them labeled here like this. Um, and uh, what you see there in the little foil, I've got 100 milligrams each uh, set up for a confined test. So um, let me get a little bit of this on my little uh, burning platform, and we'll do a flame test here, and we'll compare the two. Okay, so this is the DNP, or the dinitrophenol, and I'm going to do an indirect flame test on this first heating it from below. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm just putting a flame, a uh, butane flame below this. Okay, there you go. You see it. And, you know, not very impressive. Uh, so, let's go ahead and let's do a direct flame test on this. And typically, you always want to wear gloves when working with this stuff because it is so, um, it is such a, a unforgiving staining agent. However, I just cannot work my torch and my lighter with gloves on. That's the only reason I have them off. So I'm being very careful not to touch any of this stuff. But anyhow, uh, is that still in frame? There we go, good. All right, so I'm gonna put just a little bit on here. This again is the dinitrophenol. And we'll do, this is just the open flame test directly onto it. You see, I mean, it's slightly energetic, of course, but you know, it's not really that impressive. So, let's wait for this to cool down a little bit, and let's compare this to the trinitrophenol. So there's a scoop of the TNP, the trinitrophenol, or the picric acid, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to put the flame from underneath indirectly, and we'll see how that goes. See what I mean? Much different far more energetic and I mean it's kind of surprising to me honestly that that one extra nitro grip would make such a difference but you know obviously it does so um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit more on here and we'll do a direct flame test on this it should perform pretty much the same fortunately it's very cold out right now so my little piece of metal is cooling down pretty rapidly Obviously, you don't just want to go throwing energetic materials onto a hot metal surface. So, got to be careful of that, guys. All right, so here we go, direct flame. And you see how fast that just reacts, you know. And, you know, there's a little bit left over here burning away. 
And you know, as you can see, this stuff does not burn cleanly whatsoever. It leaves a lot of carbon behind. Trying to burn off all the residue of this stuff. All right, let's let this cool down. And uh, actually, you know what? It doesn't matter. Let me um, clip these little confined pieces up and we'll try a little confined test to compare. All right, so this is 100 milligrams of the dinitrophenol confined. Let's see what this does when we apply heat to it. Yeah, not very impressive. I mean, energetic, but hardly anything to write home about. So, let's see how this goes when we swap this out for TNP. Okay, there's our trinitrophenol, same uh, amount, 100 milligrams. And that was loud. As you see, the picric acid will actually detonate on its own. So, for you guys that were curious about the difference between trinitro and dinitrophenol, and I believe I had said to the guy who wanted to see this um, as to why I was not too excited about doing dinitrophenol, uh, because it, it's just literally a shit energetic and an even worse primary. Now you see why. So uh, I'm not even going to bother doing a shock test or a friction test for this stuff because it's just not that interesting. So that concludes the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And stay safe if you try anything like this. Later.